Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and in this week's episode, we're in the hills of Wales. It's blue skies, and yes, the two do go together sometimes, but that can mean only one thing. We're test driving. But what car could possibly be the perfect car for these twisty mountain roads? Well, it begins with P and ends in SH. It is the Porsche 912. Let's get into it. Now, before we get started, let's give you a little bit of a history of this car. Now, a number of you are probably thinking it's just a Porsche 911, isn't it? Well, no, as I mentioned previously, it's a Porsche 912. And back in the mid 60s, when the Porsche 356 was ending production and they were moving to this much more expensive, exclusive Porsche 912, they were a little bit worried in the Porsche factory that they were going to exclude some of their market because they were jumping up so high in price. So they bought a base model of this body shape, if you like, out, and that was the Porsche 912. The main difference being a four-cylinder engine out of the Porsche 356, which I think was a 1.6 engine within the boot, and everything else was pretty much the same, but the price was lower, and that's the important thing. And initially, this actually outsold the Porsche 911 in the first few years of production. Now, when this first came out, some motoring journalists thought the four-cylinder 912 handled better than the six-cylinder 911 because it's a little bit lighter in the rear, so the weight distribution was better in the 912, and it made it a little bit more nimble handling the curves. So initially, this 912 was held in quite high regard by the motoring journalists, but it was just a little bit underpowered. So the production-wise, it went from 1969 to six, uh, 1960. 5 to 69 and then in 69 the Porsche 914 took over as the base model for the Porsche range and me and Tim have a special affinity to that car because obviously we used to rally it and I think that's one of the best handling Porsches of that era quite frankly but this is a really good handling car as well however that wasn't the end of the story for the Porsche 912 because in 1975 when the Porsche 914 ended production there was a year gap until the new 924, which was the next base car, was going to come out. So what did they do? There was a little, like, you know, return for the Porsche 912 in 1975, one year only. I think it was only available in the US, and it had a two-litre engine out of the Porsche 914. And after that, that was the end of the 912. Right, enough of all this chit-chat, Tim. It's time to pack away the camera and get in and drive it because that's what this car is all about on these mountain roads. So, go on, let's go. You've had your eye on this car for a while, haven't you, mate? You've been quite excited by this day coming up. I have. This is one of my favourite cars through the workshop. It's nice, isn't it? Nice interior. It's beautiful. I love the colour, I love the shape, I love the interior. Nice, nice nappy leather, as yeah. somebody said to me once. Nappy Ooh, leather. Is that nappy leather? That was in a car show, somebody said that. Now, we've addressed the 912's Achilles heel with the... Uh, lack of power by putting a Tesla motor in the rear. But weight distribution wise, we've kept it exactly the same as the 912, but it's obviously a little bit heavier. It's around about the same weight as the 911 now. So same weight as the 911, weight distribution of a 912, power of a Tesla. And Welsh mountain roads, like this. Now that Tesla motor in the rear has a, a theoretical max power of 300 horsepower, but there's no way the skinny tyres on this 912 will be able to cope with that, so we've dialed it down somewhat. But even now, that's enough for it. Well, that is quick, yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's nippy. The uh, original 912 wouldn't do that, would it? No. Maybe down a very steep hill. But you've got the regenerative braking as well on the rear, 
and the disc brakes on the front. So braking is pretty good. We're going down quite a steep hill now and what's around about 100 amps going back in and the regen. Obviously when you're tweaking the regen, we have to dial it in per car because on a rear engine, rear wheel drive car, you don't want too much regen because that'll be a little bit like pulling up the handbrake. Right, I'm gonna go a little bit quiet here now because I'm gonna test. That'll be a first. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I wanna test the upgraded suspension now, so. Oh, <laughs> man, this thing flies. That's so flat planted, isn't it, around the corners? Oh, I tell you what, this is a right old road weapon. <laughs> this is per the perfect car for these type of roads. I was just thinking it's the perfect car for us to get back into road rallying. <laughs> if only the regulations would allow it. Yeah. Tim always goes serious when I put my foot down. <laughs> yeah, I do. I always grab onto something as well. <laughs> I think you need to reinforce the door handle I'm grabbing onto. What did you grab onto with the uh, Porsche 914 when we were seat. riding that? The seat. Oh, right. <laughs> Anything and everything. Yeah. I like the way the regen sets you up for the corner and I don't have to move my foot onto the brake. So yeah, all, all yeah. that, when I'm coming into the corner like that, slowing down, setting up, that's just all just so coming that, off. That's a good point, that, because normally you'd be off the accelerator and onto the brake, but with, with an electric car and regen, you can almost manage that braking effect just by letting your foot off the accelerator. You can really accurately, you know, set the car up on the road and yeah. position the car going into corners. Ready for a bit of a uh, show of Tesla power? Go on then, I'm holding on. <laughs> right, three, two, one, go. Whoa. That's Ooh. enough. Oh, that's quick, isn't it? <laughs> that's quick enough. Wow. That's pretty impressive. So what we put in this car is our standard Porsche 911 conversion kit. And range-wise, we're getting probably around about 150 to 200 mile range, depending on how you drive it. But let's just stop to have a chat about the kit. Now, let's have a look at the business end. So in here is half of our standard Porsche 911 conversion kit. Now it's fair to say we've been converting Porsches to electric for ooh, seven years, I think. Um, the first one was a beautiful 1979 Targa, and that was a lovely car. So our latest iteration is a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack split between the rear pack and the front pack. It's got a Tesla small drive unit or large drive unit if you really want to go for massive power. And we're selling these conversion kits to other conversion shops around the world, but also Porsche specialists as well. There's a number of Porsche specialists that have bought this kit and are currently bolting them in in the US, for instance. So in there is the main battery pack. You've got the charger there. It's CCS rapid charging as well. Um, there's a seven kilowatt AC charger there, and this is the header tank. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, what do you need a header tank for? Well, you need two header tanks on uh, electric conversions. One for the battery pack to keep the temperature of the batteries in the happy zone, and one for the motor and an inverter. And you don't want the two mixing because they work at different temperatures. So that's what the rear looks like. Let's have a look at the front. Right, so up front is the other half of the battery pack. Now, we've got this mounted where the original spare wheel used to be, so we've lost a little bit of luggage space. I'll probably say about that much luggage space in this area, but this area is exactly the same amount of luggage space. So this is how we've improved the weight distribution of the original Porsche 911 by having a little bit more weight up front with this baby. So if you want to find out more about our bolt-in electric conversion kits for the Porsches, click on the link above.
Oh, I enjoyed that. <laughs> I certainly did. Did you enjoy that? I certainly did. That's one of the one of the nicest ones we've done, I think. It is, isn't it? Uh, I think this is one of the best total package cars we've ever built. I mean, it's got the looks, it's got the handling, it's got the practicality, it's got the power, it's got you know all the other features that you need, the range, the rapid charging, all those bits and pieces together in one car. This is probably in my top three of conversions we've ever done. What do you reckon? Is it my top one? Is it really? Yeah, yeah. And you haven't I, even driven it yet either. No. I, you're I would, to drive it. I would like to take that home. Yeah. yeah. Question to you guys out there. What other car do you think would be an ideal total package converted to electric? And uh, on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.